What's up guys, Takedown here. This is episode 7 of my storytime videos. I hope you guys are enjoying them. Share them with friends if you really enjoy them. I want this to be a successful storytime series on my channel. I'm glad I got the opportunity to do it. And a lot of you guys are enjoying it and I'm getting a lot of comments on Facebook and Reddit whenever I share it. The people are asking questions, laughing, and they're enjoying the series. So, this series... It's 100% true. Every every story time I make, some people are questioning whether or not it's true or one of these fake ones. 100% true. Everything in these videos is true. Because I wouldn't be able to make some of this stuff up. And I can't go by script and remember stuff. It's just not me. I can't script stuff and memorize stuff. So this is all memory. That's how fast I can put it out there. But anyways, let's get right into it. I was threatened at work. That's going to be near the end end of the video that I share that part because it's kind of a really small moment. So some of the filler stuff that I'm going to say is stuff that happened to me at work um, near the time I started when most of it happened. So number one, I was almost crushed at work. Um, actually, this happened a few times, different days, of course. This is probably the first, I would say the first week that I started. I've been there five years now. I'm currently still there. Not enjoying it these days, but it is what it is. Um, we do have sport racks, which, you know, on top of SUVs, those big plastic um, luggage holders. It's, a lot of people don't know what a sport rack is, so I thought I might as well explain it. We have them on the high wall, high up. And whenever I started, we had a lot more than we do now. So we had pretty much the whole length of the high wall. And... Um, whenever I started, they're awkward to get down, so it took two people to get down, two ladders, and the owner at the time, the first owner I um, got hired with, he was the most helpful, and he would be on the floor and helping, so he was helping me take that down, he was on his ladder, I was on mine, so we managed to get one down um, for a customer, sold it to the customer, so he was handling that, I was closing the ladder, so I closed up his, set it up on the wall, Closed up mine. Whenever I went to move mine, I wasn't paying attention up top. I was just making sure I wasn't hitting anything down below. But th these ladders were tall, probably the 10 foot ones. And I just hit, without knowing, I hit one of the um, sport racks. And back then we didn't have them secure like we do now. We just had a cheap, thin little bungee cord. They were hanging over the shelf quite a bit. And when I just hit it, not even hard. It came down, it crashed, like the whole thing, like basically up on the wall and just straight down. Nearly crushed me. It just came within inches of me, like probably this far away is where it landed. Smashed right into the shelving, took all the pegs off it. it could have been a lot worse. If it would have hit me, they're not heavy, but I'm pretty sure it would have done some damage. Pretty sure I would have been injured from it. Um, wouldn't have died or anything like that, I wouldn't assume. But all the weight is on the bottom of these things and on the shelf, because that's where all the weight and the, the bolts and that are in the bag. So it's, it's, they're not a heavy thing, they're more of an awkward thing. So I was almost uh, crushed by that. Another time I was almost crushed, and we still have it there today. I don't know why, what the hell is wrong with them? But... We, and that, that kind of tells you of uh, we've never sold one since I've been there, which is five years. On the very top shelf of aisle six, um, right near the automotive shelf. As you guys know, I work automotive. Hence, sport racks from a minute ago. But there is for sport bikes, which in my area, nobody owns a sport bike. But they're the um, holders for sport bikes. So you can lift it up, put the wheels on this these uh, bracket things to do any work underneath it kind of waste of money in my opinion but they're extremely heavy and they have them on the very top shelf and one of my um i would probably say the first month maybe two months i had to get it down or maybe i had to get the thing next to it down i can't remember but whenever i did uh, i went up the ladder to try to move it it was heavy I didn't have a hold of it. It came crashing down. Um, literally almost took me off that ladder and it, it would have thrown me and I would have been injured because we did have at the time small aisles right here. 
really short, so I would have landed right on them and would have been hurtful. So there's that. Um, there's also been a few other times that I've been, I've had angry customers. I had a customer recently, this is a recent story, that um, came in, complained, uh, we had ice rain recently, and complained that his wipers were covered in ice, and he wanted me to warranty them. And he got started to explain that his truck is the same way. He brought his car. We have to warranty them. I said, well, if it's just ice, I, sorry, but I can't warranty ice. You, you, without being an ass, I was basically getting to the point of you should be cleaning your ice off your wipers before you go driving. Of course, it's not going to clean your windshield. I live in Canada, by the way. Um, <laughs> so I went out and checked him. I came back in. I said, it's just ice. I said, there's nothing wrong with your wipers. So he was arguing wanted to talk to the owner. I went up to the owner, explained the situation. The owner said the same thing. It's just ice. We're not warranting them. So that's two people that told him. He had to get a manager over there to tell him. So the owner got a hold of a manager, told the manager to go over and tell him, told him the same thing. The guy still waited for the store manager. Now the owner's over the store manager, but the store manager come back from lunch. Store manager came back from lunch and wouldn't you know it, he warranted the wipers that just had ice on them. So my manager... One of the managers warranted wipers, uh, didn't warranty wipers, how, how did I say it? He warranted ice, nothing wrong with the wipers, but he warranted the ice that was on them that was causing the problem. And he gave them cheaper ones. So there's that. Um, but now to get into it, when I was actually threatened at work, I think it was the first week, maybe two weeks. Um, no, I'm sorry. I started in the summer, so this would have been... September, because September, over the summer, I wasn't hired through the company. I was hired um, outside the company. The summer, uh, September is whenever I was hired on through Canadian Tire. So, um, that's really, after that is really whenever I started work nights by myself. So, this is one of the first nights I worked by myself. Customer, didn't know he was drunk at the time. Then again, I've never really been around drunk people, so I couldn't tell the difference. I thought he was just an asshole. He came out. Over, he was up by the counter. I was coming out from out back. He reached underneath the counter where the wash fluid is, grabbed a wash fluid, slammed it on the counter. So I came up and said, mm, can I help you? Yeah, I'd like to buy this. And he's all pissed off. I'm like, okay. So I pointed up front and I said, yeah, you just have to go and take it right up front. Well, he didn't like that. Yelling and screaming, no. You're... Um, I'm paying for it here. I said, well, I'm sorry. Unfortunately, I don't have a cash here. Yes, you do. He started yelling and screaming, pointing at all of our computers. Now, autom now we have um, five computers on our, our counter. And that's because you know, we're looking up uh, parts for customers and stuff like that and booking appointments. So we have all these computers. And he was pointing out and saying, you have all these caches. You're putting me through here. I'm not arguing. You're just going to do it. And at the time, number one, it's after five o'clock. So at five o'clock, this was probably close to seven. Five o'clock, our cash down in automotive gets closed. It at the time was only used for work orders for the shop. And the second thing is, I wasn't shown how to use cash. Didn't know cash at the time. Had no interest in cash. Unfortunately, I do now. Not have interest in it, but I'm forced to use it. Um, so he's yelling and screaming, demanding I put him through the cash. I told him, number one, our cash is closed. Number two, I don't know how to do cash. So it's that time of the day that you have to go up front. He was all pissed off, threatening me, saying that he's going to get me fired. He knows where I live. He knows me. I didn't know a damn thing of what he was going on about. I'm just sitting there. I wasn't like pissed. I wasn't crying. I wasn't anything. I'm just sitting there and kind of in shock like, okay, well, good for you. No, he, he kept saying he knows the manager. He's going to get me fired. What I, did, what I didn't know is he went up front, and when he paid for it, he was threatening the girls up front. The girl up front notified one of the managers, which isn't there anymore. She came and asked me, and she's like, if there's anything like that, again, just call us over right away. And me not knowing because nothing like that has ever happened before um, has done it. Now I deal with angry customers in a different way. If a customer's angry and I get to tell them bad news, I'm extremely excited, and I'm one of the first ones that want to share with them the bad news, especially if they've been an ass whole customer now if they've been a really nice customer and i have to share them bad news i feel really bad um but i also like uh, if there's a good customer and sharing great news with them 
I'm really excited about that, but I'm more excited if there's a pissed off customer and I have to share bad news with them now. That's just how it is. Uh, working retail five years, you really, you get excited over these little things and it's one of them. So I'm gonna leave this video here. This is uh, number seven of my story time videos. Hope you guys are enjoying this series. Click the, I might put in the link in the description for the playlist. If you haven't watched all of them, Go check them out. I think they're a blast. I think they're funny. And it's a blast from my past. You guys get to hear memories. You get to get to see me. Everything's authentic, real. Um, I don't have the best memory. So that's how you guys can guarantee there's nothing scripted or fake with these story time videos. Because I can't make up crap. I really can't. I'm the worst at writing stories and books and stuff like that. But anyways, I will see you guys in the next one. Take care. Peace.